Hey everyone and welcome to TMR, 10 minute reviews here on GEN. Today I'm reviewing Subnautica. Subnautica is an open world survival action adventure based game that was released by Unknown Worlds Entertainment in January of 2018, though it had been available in early access since December of 2014. It is currently sold more than 5 million copies between the PC, Mac, Xbox One and PS4 versions. Currently, it has an overwhelmingly positive review score on Steam and an 87 on Metacritic. You can get a PC copy from Steam for $24.99, though if you are watching during the summer sale that is currently going on, it's only $16.24. So you must be wondering what I think. Well, lucky for you, I'm about to lay it all down. Subnautica opens quickly, casting you directly into the moment you enter an escape pod to escape the destruction of the ship you're on, the Aurora. You crash land in a wet heap on a highly remote ocean planet called 4546B and are immediately greeted with a fire that has sprung up in your pod from the Aurora's explosion and your impact. This prompts you through a few moments where you boot up your PDA, which is a main source of information, storage, and character equipment, and the game settles you down into a world oh so carefully. Upon exiting the pod, you can see the Aurora's remains off in the distance, and yes, you can visit them eventually. But first you have to, like any survival game, start collecting items from your surrounding area to help you craft new equipment, and depending on what mode you selected uh, to play the game through in, uh, also life-giving sustenance in the forms of odd alien fish inhabitants that you can cook up. And cure, you can also cure them with salt. Speaking of inhabitants, the underwater world feels so alive when you are swimming around that it's easy to lose yourself in the beauty that was created and run out of oxygen easily. If you do happen to perish underwater with the normal survival mode, you'll respawn, but you'll have lost some of the items in your inventory. Luckily, as you progress, you are able to craft yourself better equipment, including fins, higher capacity oxygen tanks, a scanner, a flashlight, and even a habitat creator, where you can build your own bases. Most of the items that you need for getting a good start are usually close by and fairly easy to acquire. In the beginning, the underwater threats are minimal, but as you progress and get farther away from your escape pod and even deeper into the water, they become more intense and rather large. I would be lying if I said I haven't had a few moments where I exclaimed out loud in sheer terror when one of the game's largest and most terrifying creatures has just come into my view. I'm not going to share an image of any of those creatures necessarily, uh, because I really think that if you haven't played this game, it's something you just need to experience yourself. For me, this game borders on perfect in so many ways. For instance, the sound design, in my opinion, is flawless. The subtleties on how it changes the deeper you go. I don't know how to explain it, it just sounds more muffled. The farther and farther you go, and, and exactly how you would imagine it really, and, or, or the unmistakable creature sounds that can cue you in to if things are about to get really intense, or if you're still fairly safe. The music kind of sits in the background accompanying the world sound and meshes, it becomes one. You don't even notice that it's there really until you notice it's there and then you're like, this is good. This is really good. I don't think I've ever found myself sick of the sound in this game. It's 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 not even good, it's, it's perfect. The gameplay is great and the systems complement each other well. Base constructing can sometimes be a bit odd and it's usually an item that you've placed too close on the inside of the building to where you're trying to build on the outside. So usually a quick removal, replace it, put it somewhere else, fixes it. Um, there have been a few instances where I've been lost at what exactly is blocking me from building in the area I want to. And so I've changed the design around a bit and, and I've worked around it. It is intuitive and it, and it works really well. And there's nothing quite as cool as stepping into 
an almost or fully completed base the first time and going, holy shit, you know, I built this. And with the pieces you have, honestly, the customization level is only impeded by your own imagination. The different vehicles are great, including the ability to customize some of them. They all feel good and are a blast to drive around as the game progresses and also become increasingly more helpful uh, to get you towards the final end game, as it were. The graphics shine fairly well. I mean, you truly feel like you're underwater, um, albeit it's a little poppy, a little colory, but it, it feels like this could be a place that exists. Schools of alien fish life floating around, uh, like the bioluminescence of some of the flora and fauna at night are, are rather incredible and, and can be captivating. You might find yourself for seconds just staring, <laughs> you know, and it's fantastic. Um, the day night cycle, especially the sunrises, are some of the most beautiful of any game I have ever seen. And, and that's not an exaggeration. That's that's 100 percent the truth when it comes to the graphics. There are two glaring complaints that I have to make, and it's apparent in both the PC version that I've played as well as the Xbox One version. Graphical pop-in is very apparent, very apparent, and it happens all the time. Um, my thought is, the way the game was designed, it was probably impossible to remove or fix. It can be jarring at times, honestly, especially if you've been in one area for a while and everything's loaded in and then you go to the next biome over or whatever and everything has to kind of load in and, and popping. and. Uh, and it's too bad because it can and will take you out of the moment a little bit. The only other issue I have is that there's times where you have to surface for air, go into your pod, enter your base uh, through a hatch, and there is just a moment of lag. It just hangs. It basically freezes for that moment. And this is a problem I've seen on both the Xbox and the PC version, and it seems to be identical. Both of these problems do seem to be identical when and how they happen. Um, so, being so similar uh, makes me think this is a game issue and not necessarily a hardware issue. These two issues don't ruin the game for me by any means. These could have been corrected or could even possibly be corrected in the future. I would almost say this game is borderline perfect. Um, the control scheme is easy to use whether you opt for a keyboard or mouse or you go with a regular controller. I myself prefer the controller so I can sit back, relax while I'm completing my tasks hang out, swim around, deal with some stuff, build some stuff. It's great. The, the game really kind of helps hold your hand um, in getting going and, and staying in the right direction. It's not overbearing by any means, and it's actually welcome because there's a lot to get lost in. At the end of the day, is this game perfect? Sadly, no. But like I mentioned earlier with the two issues, if, if they were fixed, it would be a perfect game. It would be. Should you play this game? If you like open worlds, alien survival games, a great story, yeah, you absolutely should. It's it's so worth it. You can't go wrong. For me, this is an easy four out of five on the gen review scale because its flaws are minor and they're not game breaking. Might take you out here and there and remove you from that world for a brief second, but you're right back in. And, um, you know, if you're like me and grew up watching Jaws as a kid, it can be absolutely terrifying and nerve wracking just from the start, even when you're around the happy fish that don't attack you, <laughs> you know, it really is easy to sit down, boot in, load up and get lost in this beautiful underwater alien world for hours on end and not even realize it. So yes, I highly recommend this game. I highly recommend you guys try it out. Give it a go. If watching this video, piqued your curiosity in the slightest, then this is definitely a game for you and, and don't even second guess it. And I hope you do try it. It's a great experience and it's well worth the price of admission. Now, if you'll excuse me, I was just able to get the bundle deal for Subnautica Below Zero since I already own the first game. I just saved myself a couple bucks and now I've got a whole new thing to try out. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you again here soon for more 10 minute reviews.
Thank you for watching this latest 10 minute review video here on GEN. If you're new here, consider leaving a like, a comment, and maybe even subscribing. We've got a bunch of other different types of videos here as well. You can check out Name That Movie Poster every Saturday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern. We premiere the latest episode. Not only that, but we have the B&J exposés where we deep dive into some weird and wacky stuff and discuss it. Think about sticking around, subscribing, liking, commenting. We're here. We want to chat with you and we want to hear what you think.